Hello and welcome back to another episode of White Pilled here with the Jonathan. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing very well. Very well. Feeling uh, pretty hopeful. I was telling you last night I met up with a group of friends of mine, had a great conversation. Um, you know, just seeing people you haven't seen in a while and hearing that they're uh, feeling good about things is, it's you know, keeps me going, keep, keep it strong, doing all right. Um, how you been? Doing the same? Yeah, doing the same. You know, uh, okay. I, uh, I, as you know, I switched careers a while back, and I'm, I'm really, really enjoying the career that I that I'm doing now. Uh, every day, I, I get a, a reminder about how uh, different this is versus uh, versus what I was doing. That's good. I hated office work, man. I really did. <laughs> I hear that a lot. I mean, I didn't like my experience in the office. I mean, it's definitely something I think I could go back to uh, in the right environment and, uh, you know, but it's just the dynamic is not, it's not where I dream to be. And I, I totally feel you there. Yeah. But glad to hear things are going well. Uh, we're going to talk to people today about uh, remaining hopeful, but we're going to get into a lot of what's been happening lately. And you and I, we talked about a little bit beforehand and we'd mentioned that uh, nihilism is a word it's a it's a bit of a buzzword but if you never heard of like what it means um I feel we're gonna unpack that and kind of see what a healthy reaction to it is so that uh it's not just some crazy topic sitting in your head um so i, I just jotted down that nihilism is when you don't believe there's any purpose to anything that every action you have doesn't matter because it's completely futile because there's no plan Everything just kind of happens on accident. Um, first off, do you agree with that? And, and what, what do you when someone says nihilism? And I, I mean, actually, I could have probably had it written on screen somewhere, but <laughs> I didn't think of that. N i h i l i s m, nihilism. Right. Well, what's that mean to you? I, I, to me, uh, what what nihilism really means is that. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's this point in time when uh, when somebody uh, uh, is in, is in the process of uh, of sort of waking up to exactly what's going on in in, in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, when when you realize exactly how small you are, and exactly how big uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the problems are. Right. And there's a <clears throat> and, and there's a very natural desire to just embrace how tiny you are and shrink away from the world. And and I think that that really is what nihilism ends up being. It it, it ends up right. being It's an over submission uh, maybe. Well, yeah, it's it's almost like uh it, it it's it, it's almost like uh it, each person is at the beginning of their own hero's journey. And they decide right. to stay in the, in the little dirt starting area. area. Yeah. Well, yeah. I you know we you had mentioned Tolkien before we got going, and I think that's what the quintessential Shire is. Uh, you know, the land of Bree and Shire, which uh, is like to anyone who's not even remotely focused on Tolkien as we are, it's the land up north in between like the elves, and it's completely separate from the War Province. So it's it's where all the uh, halflings, which are Frodo and them, that's where they chill out. That's where they brew a bunch of ale. That's where they sit and chill, and they're just a bunch of farmers having a good time, no war. But that's the concept: is uh, if they, if you don't leave where you start off and it's safe, you won't go off and see everything else and see an adventure of the world. I think that's what Tolkien right. wanted people to do. He he said, understand that where you're at might be beautiful, and wonderful, and great. But if you don't go out and see the world, you'll never know what else is out there to bring back. Because the, the whole uh, uh, Bil Bilbo's autobiography was there and back again. This is the concept. Right. I, I left, I did a bunch of crazy stuff, but it was all about coming back to share with the people I, I, I originally knew. You know? Right, right, right. That's why I think and you I want to motivate argue, people to argue. do. Because it's, it's good for every nation, you know, if you got people right. doing that. Right, and I, and I would argue that that uh, that the Shire is almost pre nihilism. Right. And oh, if, yeah. Uh, and if and if Bilbo had turned back 
at, at one of the first parts of the adventure, right? And just stayed in Hobbiton. Hobbiton. Yeah. He uh, uh, he would have been living in uh, in nihilism. He would have he would have just said that there's well, that's, big dark things out there, and I can't do anything about it. That's what he battles. That's exactly what it is, and that's what you know. That's why it's considered the hero's journey. Is he has to. <clears throat> doubt himself and doubt the journey and doubt everything in question right but it's only by going out there and getting over it and understanding that you can keep putting one foot in front of the other then you know there are you know there 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 is dirt beneath your feet you can keep going and uh you know that it's the idea that he couldn't i mean that's when you think of everything that he deals with it's it's you know it, it, it's if you want to get to the literary side of things which uh, I'm down with is that we see everything from Bilbo's eyes, which is the eyes of someone who is ignorant. So a lot of the characters going around him aren't telling him things because it's almost there's a political conflict amongst the dwarves, like all these different people. But we as the audience, we have this beautiful innocence. And the thing is, all the things he's doing are obviously combating his nihilism because he's oblivious to the true ramifications. If he really knew how important every single thing he was doing was, he would give up and he wouldn't actually do all the things. It's the same thing with Frodo. I think that, that's why, you know, it's almost the father and the son. You have Bilbo's journey and, and Frodo's journey and you don't get Frodo's without Bilbo's. And I, now I feel like a complete uh, Bilbo myself <laughs> saying that that many times, but. Well, right, right, right. And and the uh, uh, the, the the fact of the matter is, is uh, with, 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 with both of those characters, their strength only comes from their constitution. Completely. They're 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 not physically strong. They're not. Uh, uh, they're, it's, they're not they, uh, mentally impressive. They had there's several several times where each of them were the only person with hope, like you said, constitution. The idea that right. to zig when everyone else was ready to zag, in in, in right. the very basic way. When everyone was completely like given up, and it's that one thing. It's like you know what? Maybe we do have a shot here, and right. it, it, you know, I think the first one is the first one coming out of the gate is the um, uh, scene with the trolls and getting them. I think that's the first one out of the gate where he, uh, um, what the, I, don't, I don't remember what they stole or something, but oh, was it was their goats or something like that. They they stole like the livestock. And all the doors were asleep, asleep and something. And, and Bilbo was the one person he like solved the problem before anyone even knew what had happened. Right. And, and yeah, like, it's, 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 it's been a while since I read The Hobbit. But I'm yeah. just saying. Well, <laughs> that's like the first example. But like Frodo, it, there's a whole bunch of times where like essentially everyone else was doing something else, but they're capable of doing things on their own. Is it, really what I was trying to break that down to. Is it's like they had moments where uh, um, major influences on their entire. Uh, life, Aragorn, you know, Gandalf, all those guys were like their mentors. Um, right. Well, not Aragorn for Bilbo, but um, right. They they were able to do not what the role models wanted to do because they knew what they thought was right, what what they thought everyone should be doing, and ended up being right in the end. You know. Right, right, right. I mean, uh, in in Lord of the Rings, Frodo was the creation of the Fellowship. Right. Because exactly. Frodo just basically said, "Well, I took the ring to uh, to Rivendell to the meeting. I, yep, I can take I, I can take it to Mount Doom. I can take I can it all the way, it. right? But yeah, that's that's yeah. exactly when he made that decision too. Which is funny is he created his own crisis in that moment. Mm -hmm. He took on that he took on that level of risk, however you want to call it. But that's when he began the my precious. Like literally, I think." A few scenes later is the first time he has this like moment where he's just like worshiping it too much, you know. He he has his false idol that he's like meant to destroy and um, it's a, interesting imagery. I gotta say, the 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 more you understand that that Tolkien was a religious man, um, it, it's funny because I do think a lot of atheistic people like that. You know, you think of your your fantasy f fans; they they're not as um, probably religiously inclined. Would you say? Uh, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know. That, that's I, not I, a fair, I, I, you know, I asked that I, question. That's not a fair assertion to make at all. But I, I just, yeah. I think it's funny that the, the, uh, that these writers from the, I mean, Tolkien wrote this, what, um, was it 1930s? I don't even remember how, 
Or was it further back than that? I, I think, uh, I think I the Lord remember. of the Rings came out in like the 60s. 60s? I think so. I, okay. I don't know when The Hobbit came out. The Hobbit came out right. obviously before it. I don't. I, I can't even remember putting a date on it, but it's like it hasn't been around that long. So I just look at the people that it's influenced, and uh, it's, a, it's a lot of the fantasy uh, universe. Like it, it spawned a lot of other things, and I just yeah. having that religious hopeful spark to it is. It, it's funny when maybe you get this fan fiction that's more of a nihilistic nature. And when we when we got into nihilism, we mentioned like the idea of uh, fear and uh, sadness and we're going to get into like what what that means why um i think that nihilism um is almost has two hands to it both of those sadness i think addresses you more consistently all the time while fear is more of like a currency that you wield and you it, like you you use it but also using it af affects you like once you understand the power that you wield using fear you know um, so let's start with uh, sadness first and how uh, it's a complete opposite to hope, being hopeful. I mean, it's hard to be hopeful and sad at the same time. That's why I, I think it makes for a duality. But um, what, I, you know, what about having purpose do you think makes people not feel sad? Because that's what nihilism ultimately is. is there's, you don't believe in there being a purpose to anything. And us obviously having discussed religion to a point, without uh, you know we can pretty much keep this conversation secular but what do right. you think about um the hope of there being a purpose to things is like a combat against feeling sad so uh purpose requires action right, right? uh you you can't you can't set a purpose without then uh uh in engaging with it uh the thing about sadness is sad, sadness is the uh, is the opposite of engagement. Right. Sadness uh, uh, sadness can be very healthy, but uh, but when when you're actively uh, embracing uh, melancholy, right. you're you're not you're not actively embracing uh, the future. Uh, you're you're embracing the past. Mm -hmm. And and you're not actively. Uh, it's always uh, a reflection. It's always a reflection. Right. You're always yeah. I think you, you mentioned you're like looking in the past. I think it's a very good distinction to make because reflection is good sometimes. But um, yes, past like you said, past the because uh, uh, you do need to feel melancholic. You do need to have that humility added to you. But like if you're like you said, if you start kind of sitting there for too long. It's uh, like leaving your your engine idling. Your your you might as well either turn off the car or get going somewhere. You know, because it, it's an emotion that can uh, wear on you. I think is is really the way I see right. it. Right, 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 right. Uh, you know, to uh, I mean, uh, to give to give a point uh, outside of uh, of the current year stuff. Right. Uh, la last year, one of my best friends, Dan, died. Mm. Uh, you know he's uh, not very healthy. He had a few uh, things going on, and, and he passed away. Uh, every once in a while, I, I think about him, and you know I obviously get very sad and, mi and miss him, and uh, you know shoot off a prayer, and uh, you know kind of just stay in that moment. Right. Uh, you know while while I'm thinking of Dan, I'm I'm not pursuing new friendships or anything like that nor can i mend anything with him he's he's gone you know right um uh you know that that being said uh there's nothing about uh, uh about that that's unhealthy I, I i would hate to forget him exactly you know? um so there's 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 a very healthy part of of remembering things and of sadness mm -hmm. but there's well, also a very unhealthy part of staying in that moment for too long and letting and letting it uh unnaturally keep you from moving on right i i think being able to when you do reflect on it it to provide you a net positive you know you don't want um 
going back and looking at how things could have been as uh, a specter in a way you know I think some people like when right. you reflect on that too often uh, you know some people have a hard time moving on they don't see uh, what life would be like without them and then you know you're just haunted by that forever I think that can be not a positive motivator as long as you you're, you're like you said you're bringing them along I think that's what a lot of uh, even pagan religions believe they believe that the ancestors are like with you watching you like you can't interact with them but you know they're kind of there I think you know that's that's um, you know what the concept of God belief is to anyone is believing that the people you lost are still are with you in some way and I think if you don't actually take the time to reflect on that you never get that too you know so right. I, it's important it's important to be able to get that um, well I, I mean, is is being black pilled uh, the 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 opposite? We're you know we're white pilled here on this channel or this show. Um, is it black pilled not remembering um, those moments, like not ever looking back on those moments of sadness and saying, because you know to be that angry and have that much malice against people, it's like you you almost have to be able to wipe the slate clean and look at the things that you had that were you know. If you want to be very basic with it, beautiful, beautiful moments in your life that, you know, it's not anything you can interact with anymore, but it's good to hold on to. You have to, like, lose that appreciation to go completely hopeless, which is, you know, that's what the nihilistic is. It's, there was no purpose. There's there no purpose to remembering your friend Dan, because ben, you never met anything. Dan, nothing you did with Dan ever meant anything, so why reflect on it? Would be the nihilist uh, kind of take on it, so... Right, 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 right. Well, and and there's and there's sort of a, a, a half step for for nihilism, right? That is a uh, it did matter, and it was taken from you, and you'll mm. never get anything else like that again. Oh, and that's that's much more dangerous too. Right, right, right. Because the one's just giving right. up; the other one is keeping in the fight, but never thinking you're gonna win. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I've I've met way more people who who think who uh, who focus on their losses. Yeah. Without without uh, uh while discount wait while discounting their gains, and assuming that that it's nothing but losses from here on out. Yeah, so you have to count your losses, hundred percent. But if you're yeah. like only focusing on them and, and and the wins mean nothing at at some point, that's uh. That's definitely not a good place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To to assume that this life is nothing but death, yeah, is dangerous. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, I I don't think I don't know. I, I wonder how often people consider death, but like, um, if if all you did was focus on it, that almost inversion. That's I don't know. I have a hard time with that myself. You know. If, if that just being the, uh, yeah. the 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 point of reflection of all things, that would be uh, oh man. So I mean, we, we you mentioned something to me earlier. You're saying that there's almost two responses uh, um, to you know someone engaging you with this black pilled agenda. This is their this right. is this is their frame of mind. We just described it. It's like when they're coming to you from this frame and they're engaging with you, they see that you're someone who's going to be not trying to portray that worldview what did you say uh, uh you said retreating is one of the ways a lot of people react to it and then uh um almost lashing out th th those were the two dichotomies i saw what right. would be more of a healthier point of uh of, of going into it because there are two distinct ways of, of of like avoidance and engagement and it's sometimes there's a third path of of least resistance there yeah, I. It's. I I I tend I I tend to have more. Uh, uh, I I tend to have more sympathy for for the people who want to burn the whole thing down. Right. And more and more empathy for the people who want to retreat. Uh, I, I can deal I with get, that. I I. Yeah. I get the idea of. Uh, you get to the place where you feel powerless to do everything, so you're going to, you're you are going to for, uh, force effective change, even if you realize that 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 your change is bad and poor. Right. <laughs> uh, and and my answer to that is think harder. There there is effective change for you. 
Right. Maybe you can't solve the United States or the globe, but you can solve something for you. Right. You can solve something for or your some, family. Or I was going to say, or someone close, close to you. Yeah. Yeah, for, for your close community. Yeah. Uh, you know, neighborhood, neighbors, coworkers, sister, brother, father, mother, best friend, you know. Yeah, there's, you can, there's you always someone. Do. There's always someone. There, there is always someone, and there, and there's uh, always something that that you can do, that that if you start aiming for blessing them, you will be blessed as well. Uh, I agree. Yeah. For 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 the people who really want want to just retreat, uh, hey man, I, I that I get too. You know, I I get I get. I understand the, the, the it. I try. Yeah. Um, I, 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 well, sometimes, I, sometimes I you, with it, you everyone, know, everyone does need to be able to retreat, you know, but it's, oh yeah, it's, if it's, if that's your constant, if you're just auto retreat every time, if you're just going limp, like, you know, someone, someone swings a punch and you just go limp, you know, that's yeah. not good either. You gotta, you know, you, you can't, well, wait, what's the up? You can't pass them up every time, you know? Right, 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 and and the other the other thing is is there 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 are uh, healthy ways to retreat and there are unhealthy ways to yes. retreat, right? Right, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's what if we're at, if yeah. you're going to if you're going to retreat, you should do so in as much as you can to try and uh, seek still, stillness. You know, right? To to, well, to uh, it, it's it, you that, know it should be some sort of centering type of thing right yeah that gets into mindfulness being mindful of your body is i think i you know i right. i have a fixation on my nails i used to bite my nails real bad i don't i actually buying nail a few nail clippers around the house and keeping my nails trimmed is how i don't bite my nails i just always keep it but it's having those fixations everyone has different whatever it is it's when you're right. in that moment is is like you said uh being aware of what's going on i think and finding stillness and getting back to that and that gets into a lot of uh you know meditative principles which i don't think western uh religion really gets into but it's uh, eastern is where i've got a lot of what i read on it but uh getting back to where you're actually at what's really going on and uh because w- whenever these factors are hitting you you're not going to be able to do it if you're escalating and that's the other side of the you know you mentioned retreat the other would be engaging attacking destroying seeking out and you know pouring vengeance on whatever the black pill is and I, I, that's not good either because one um you know they're human too you know they might be completely wrong right. but uh you don't want right. to completely ruin their lives and the other thing i i, I I'm, I'm very conscious of why i don't go for that reaction is it's people are watching you know people watch the way and if they see wrath out of you um it's just not good. It's really, um, there's not many times where wrath is going to be the, um, righteous path, <laughs> you know, there's times, there's times, there's times for it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting motivation to wield, but yeah, 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 yeah. I there's mean, a lot it, of collateral it, damage it, it, potentially is, is the is the way I see it. There's a lot of potential for collateral damage. Right, right, right. And, and it, it and it is an interesting thing just to, uh, just to bring politics into this for just a second. Yeah, it is. It is an interesting thing when when we're talking about uh, uh, when we're talking about war. You know, like mass murder campaigns, and we're t- and we're talking about uh, uh, you know codified mafias and stuff like that. It, it it is it is a hard thing to know uh, what's. Uh, wh- where should where should you put uh, wrath? And where should you put uh, effective change and do those things uh, correlate to to each other, or or will your wrath get in the way of your ideas, ideals, and right, goals? right? Oh, yeah. and and once it's the funny thing I see is uh, you know life's always changing, right? So if you dedicate your motivation to anything to being wrath, and now from that from that decision on things are changing, people's opinions are changing, is you're almost stuck in the past on this war path where the world around you might be adapting towards your war path. And, you know, peace peace might already be, the, you know, you might have already threatened what you need out. But I think some people, yeah. they, they, they get that pent up and it's like this tiny little battle and that's where you get these really bad displays is it's like no one around them sees this and then that's where it bubbles up a lot of times. I see 
Um, right. I mean, I, I work in a restaurant. I've, I see people getting fights all the time. So, like, that, that's why I see. Normally, it's one person sitting back afterward going, whatever, and you got that one person. They came in, and they're like this, and they lash mm -hmm. out. And, and I, it, it never works. That's all I want to say with that little anecdote I see in restaurants all the time. What, when you attack someone at rest with all your wrath, you're not going to get what you want. And, and I guess that's, that's, that's really the goal of not going black pilled is, is I think we've made a good argument for black pill just not being a way of getting your preferred life path. Is that a good way to put it? Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It's not constructive. Yes, it's not constructive. That's kind of what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Because if you retreat, if, if you retreat, you, you're, uh, again, like, I, like I said last time, you're, you're locking in your losses. Lock, yeah, that's it. You've locked in you've, your losses. Uh, I, I remember. You've, uh, you, 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 you bought high and sold low, and, mm -hmm. that's, and that's what you did. If, uh, if you're looking to burn the world down, then, uh, then, then even your allies were, will turn against you out of self-defense. Well, and I think a lot of people willing to burn things down aren't always willing to rebuild either. Which is which is yes. another interesting yes. dynamic towards burning it all down. Is do you have the skills yes. to rebuild? You see, you, you see that with the people who are literally burning things down. Yes, yes. I it's... mean, I mean to even follow their arguments, they most of them are uh, self-described communists. Yeah. Do you think they have any idea on how to build a commune? <laughs> Not successfully. I'm sure they have a dream that is very beautiful of a utopian meadow with. Uh, just food, the, fruit yeah, that falls after, off the tree. It's going to be lovely, but uh, after, it doesn't work that way. After they worse than the, than the Visigoths, I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what it, uh, it, it, it... I don't know. It, if communes were the way, I feel like we'd be hearing about a lot more of them, you know? There'd be... There'd be like the the wilderness people. There'd, like, there'd be Apache tribes again, essentially, like in the plains. Like, there's no reason why they human beings can't do that it's just yeah yeah and, and to be clear i'm i you know? i really really want a a a peaceful coexistence kind of thing for uh you know that the anarcho syndicalists and, and those that, that type yeah i i really want them to just pursue it right great do it i'll own the wilderness i that's the way i see it yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, if if you make the best patchouli ponchos and and watermelons out there, I'll buy them from you. I mean, no. that's that, <laughs> very specific. <laughs> All right. I well, am working off the meme a bit there. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I've never heard of the patchouli. Uh, the patchouli poncho, I, you said? Uh, you know, I, it, hemp. You know? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, out in Colorado. Yeah, I mean, you guys are, you got some probably the best wilderness out in this country, I'd say. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. There's there, there's fantastic uh, wilderness. There's a few uh, hippie enclaves out here. Is you know? there? And I was and I was born in the Pacific Northwest, which I think is has when it's not on fire has uh, has uh, the best uh, wilderness in the United States. You think? I've uh, I've yeah, never been out yeah. that far. And Col oh, man, Colorado's you... as far west I've been. I thought it was amazing. Oh man, you, you gotta you gotta visit the uh, the rainforest on the peninsula there in Washington. It's it's beautiful, or Multnomah Falls in uh, in Oregon. You know, just stunning. Well, Absolutely how about stunning. how Take about that? Away. How about we're both hopeful that we both get the opportunity to go there again before this is all said and done? Because I, I don't think it's time to go there right now. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Right now it looks like a hellscape.